like not only is it the content where you've got people with like crazy superpowers and things like that, it's it doesn't take itself all that seriously compared to a show like Black Sales. So it's having fun and you can have fun with that style and that and that tone. I'm very excited to talk about this show. Uh, I binged it all in one sitting and was just blown away by it. And I was not familiar with the anime or manga prior. So I'm curious, were you familiar with this, you know, iconic franchise prior to being approached for the show? So did you get all eight episodes? I did. And I was, I just, I, I was so immersed in the world. I, I had to just get through it all. And it even got me to go watch uh, the anime now. Uh, I'm about 30 episodes yeah. in. And uh, I'm having just as much fun. Um, so you 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 weren't familiar with it before. What was what was no, your? I wasn't at all. Basically, you know, heard that there was this huge project coming into Cape Town, which is always like, oh, that's exciting. Something's happening. Uh, there were a couple of uh, people that were on Black Sales that were associated with the project as well, and I'd been on Black Sales. So then it was like, oh, they're coming, they're doing another pirate show. So you're like, oh, well, this is cool. I've done pirate shows, sword fights, ship battles. This is going to be like that kind of thing again. And when I learned a little bit more about the IP, and they were like, well, it's a pirate show, but you've got a pirate ship that's colored hot pink, for example. <laughs> not it's not at all that likes it like black sales so you know here's you know this is the this is the anime this is the manga um check it out and see and and yeah d- totally different tone so i watched um like yeah around 20 or 30 episodes of the anime and I, I was able to flip through like casually at you know if i wanted to there were like little piles of the manga like stacked in the corners of the production office uh, but yeah, it was my my first time hearing about the IP, and what's what's kind of it's one of those things where um, you know you hear about something for the first time, and then suddenly it's everywhere. Because now every other person I talk to is like, "Oh, One Piece, that's amazing!" Like I've been a big fan for years and years. So it's like, "Oh, how did I not know about this before?" <laughs> if you're not tuned into the anime sphere, it can it can be hidden, but uh, it's. It's a, uh, I mean, now that I'm into it, it's, it's great to see. Yeah. So you, you talk about the tonal differences between black sales and one piece. And so I'm, yeah. I'm curious, you know, in doing your research with the anime and the manga, what were some of the biggest takeaways that you found that you needed to bring into your work as editor? First of all, it's, it's a lighter tone. Black sales is, is, is very dark, very heavy, very serious. Um, and you know, especially if you know the, the manga is a little bit more grounded than the anime, but but the um, but it's it's a lighter show. It's bright. It's optimistic. It's colorful. Um, you know, there's there's this great joy and warmth and sincerity to it, uh, but yeah, it's it's not it's not like everyone's you know this like twisted antihero. You know? <laughs> um, it's yeah, very very different tonally in that sense, um, and then also sort of like in a in a stylistic sense, uh, a show like Black Sales is trying to be you know quite gritty and realistic, whereas you know because you're in a like not only is it the content where you've got people with like crazy superpowers and things like that, it's it doesn't take itself all that seriously compared to a show like Black Sales. So it's having fun and you can have fun with that style and that and that tone. You know, how you pace things, you can you can allow for um, for these for these moments of sort of wry humor to come through and and sort of play with the footage a bit more as well. Kind of let let, let it be fun. Don't don't be you know too bogged down with it. So it, it definitely means you approach the material a little bit differently you handled it very well uh i mean it does feel fun uh, throughout the show now uh i believe uh in doing my research you were uh editor for four of the episodes uh four of the eight is that correct yes and no so i was um initially editing for episode five and six um which are the baratier episodes um and that was block two and then um what happened is the the production sheet kind of like expanded towards the end and the block one editor Kevin uh, Ross um, 
he and his, and his assistant Daniel Williams had to be uh, they, they had another commitment that they had to move on to. So um, th- those two episodes were handed over to me uh, to continue. And then, um, yeah, they, they were still kind of, there was still quite a lot to do um, as it turned out. So then I ended up getting credited on those episodes as well. So, yeah, basically, yeah, four episodes I got some kind of credit on. And then my my first two episodes, kind of the same thing happened. There were there was some other stuff that happened later on after I'd left. Um, so Tim Kinsey, ended up doing uh, work and got, I think, an additional editing credit on F5 and an editing credit on F6. So, yeah, the episodes got passed around and, you know, we've had a lot of people have had input and had their chance to, you know, give it all a bit of love. Um, and it's it's great to be able to collaborate like that. I was just actually going to ask going off of that. I mean, what is that the clip cr- eh. <laughs> what is that collaboration process like where you have a director's vision, you have your vision. Aichiro Oda is was ve- has been very involved from what I've heard. So, what is it like, you know, having <clears throat> to sort of come together for one unified vision while still passing off episodes like that? Well, usually You know, in TV, things typically work in a very structured way through the editing process. You know, we we get the footage in, the editor starts cutting pretty much independently. You know, we'll have a brief from the director and the showrunners, but it's very much like this is the editor's cut. This is our first impression of what the footage is offering and what we, you know, what we feel we can get out of it and do something with. And and kind of like no matter how good you think your editor's cut was, then the, the other voices start coming in and it's always elevates things so then it goes to the director's cut he gets his chance that's then the official cool that's the director's cut then it's the showrunners and they get their sort of official producer's cut then it goes to the network and then and then it went on to Oda and you sort of um with all these stages they would um because they they were things like reshoots happening um it's it would sort of come around in circles every now and then and kind of go back to like editor director (laughs) um yeah, and uh, what ended up being incredibly helpful is that there were points in time where where everyone literally sat around a boardroom together, table together, watching the episode. Um, and you know, so you'd have the showrunners, you'd have Tomorrow Studios, you'd have Netflix, you'd have the you know the editorial team, um, and we were all able to get on the same page and discuss together. And then. Um, and then, yeah, Sensei Oda kind of had this sort of like o- overarching, you know, presence over the whole thing. So it's sort of once, once, um, once our team were all were all kind of like, cool, we're feeling like we're in a good space. Let's get his feedback and you know do what we need to do to make him happy because obviously having his blessing is absolutely critical to delivering the show the way the fans want it done. Now, I've read quotes from uh, Stephen and Matt about how uh, intimidating almost it was to have Oda's involvement on the show and how nervous they were while doing it. And I'm curious if you yourself ever felt that when delivering your editor's cuts uh, to the, you know, like you say, to the various levels. Yeah, you're certainly holding your breath a little bit for specifically for that step. It's, you know, I've, I've worked with Netflix before. So, you know, get, getting up to, to their level was, you know, like, part of the course it's just part of the process um you're kind of used to the rhythm of that and having the studio give their notes um but yeah having kind of like this this much kind of bigger presence and bigger personality and knowing that you know he's not a tv guy you know we we are tv people who make tv he's not he like he's obviously been involved with anime but like this is his baby in a very different way um so you know he, he uh, some of the things that you know might occur to us as a way of doing things because you know, oh, but this is how TV works. You know, he 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 can kind of have a, have a comment that sort of throws that out the window, and it's like, okay, cool. Well, let's you know put a different put a different hat on here and uh, give this um, you know give us another go if we need to. You know, find find something else in the footage. Look at some look at doing some things a slightly different way. Um, yeah. If we need, if we needed to make him, you know, do do another pass for him, then we then we would. Well, it sounds like a a, a nice inclusive process, uh, as as much as maybe, like you say, a little holding of the breath. <laughs> it really, really was, and I think, um, you know, when you when you're involved with something for such a long time, I mean, I personally was on the show for for pretty much a calendar year on like on the dot, and you know, it, it still extended like. A, a couple of months past that point in editorial. Um, 
so yeah, it's it becomes this really big thing, and you you kind of fall in love with the show and with everyone working on it, and you get you kind of get used to your team and you know working with them and what everyone is bringing to the table, and then you know that that helps it feel like this really collaborative uh, process. Well, I'm glad you got to have that. Um, so diving into your episodes in particular, what would you say? was uh, one of the more challenging scenes uh, or sequences to really help put together in the edit? Probably the, the Zara Mihawk fight came with, came with some challenges. It's a, you know, it's a big sequence. It took multiple days to shoot it. Um, and then, you know, certain things were picked up again later. So, you know, you went back to find slightly different things. So, the, you know, I've done a lot of work with fight scenes. Um, you know, you know quite, a, quite a lot of my previous work has involved action, you know, Warrior in particular is pretty much like all fight scenes all the time. So that in and of itself didn't intimidate me. Um, But first of all, it was bringing that sort of more anime style to the fight. So you kind of have these dramatic close-ups and these cool angles and, um, you know, giving, giving it these, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's bringing a level of cool and self-awareness to it that you wouldn't, again having something that was trying to be more more realistic and self-serious so uh it's a bit more heightened and so first of all making sure that element's there but then also understanding the stakes for Zoro and his character arc you know it's not just about making this fight look great and and fun and cool and you know it does it look like he's really swinging a sword around or doesn't it you know it's it's the, the the mechanics of a fight scene are kind of the one side of it but it's really about the emotions of a fight scene and uh yeah we dig, digging and finding like what what is Zara's story arc right now um it's it's kind of um understanding his motivation why is he here why does he feel the need to fight Mihawk because it kind of comes out of nowhere this guy shows up and Zara's immediately like cool I'm going to fight you to the death and it's like what where did that come from um, so you really kind of setting that, setting that up and establishing that and feeling that emotion with the character. Um, and, and that had to go through, um, yeah, kind of, a, a, a few different iterations and reworkings to, until we felt like we got that right. Um, yeah. So that was, that was kind of one of the trickier ones. Uh, and then same with, um, with kind of Luffy towards the end of that scene where, you know, it's, his his optimism has kind of failed him for the first time. Um, you know, something something you know serious has actually happened. There's you know big stakes going on here. Um, so you know how how he reacts to this moment and the emotions involved, and um, and then that obviously carries through into episode six. Um, so yeah, you know you kind of think think of it when you approach a scene like this, like oh a fight scene, but it's like wait no, this is actually um, a really pivotal drama character moment for two of your leads. Uh, and that's what you need to be paying the most attention to. I love that all of that thought went into it because as I watched the anime after seeing the show, I definitely felt more of the emotion from Luffy and uh, Zoro in that fight in live action than I did in the anime. Um, so that's that's awesome. So would you say that was also your favorite scene to work on or was there a different scene or sequence that you found uh, more fun or more, you know, engaging to, to be a part of? Probably yeah, some of the more emotional scenes. I really, I really enjoy when there's kind of emotion and drama. I mean, like the ship battle is a lot of fun. That was great. Um, but the, the one scene that really stands out to me is um, when uh, in episode six, Zoro is now wounded and, um, it opens with Nami is reading from uh, the storybook to him and then Luffy enters and she confronts him and calls Luffy out for, you know, like, how did, how did you allow this to happen? And for me, like, a lot, again, you know, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a turning point in the series for, for their relationship. Um, and, they both performed so amazingly well in that scene. You could really feel the depth of these characters and, you know, that they they felt real and they felt human. And that's what you want from a live action compared to something that isn't live action is, uh, 
it's um, it needs to be grounded. You want your audience to feel like these are believable characters that you can root for and get behind, um, and you know, you know, not uh, you know, not maybe think like, oh, well, this is a cartoon. Like, no, you know, <laughs> and, and anime is never the same as any kind of cartoon in the first place. But uh, this, yeah, the, the the performances that that uh, Emily and Ilaki gave just really elevated that scene and it was it was such a joy to to edit it for that reason um finding those performances finding those character moments um and just lo- you know loving what they were doing on camera it is a really wonderful yeah. scene and uh i think emily practically steals the whole show for me she was incredible as nami and, and yaki does great as monkey so i can't wait for people to finally see it in a few days um which speaking of uh, I don't know if you've had the time, but reactions are starting to come out now on online from uh, mm-hmm. journalists like myself. Have you had the chance to read or hear about any of them so far? Well, I saw one with a very promising headline uh, saying that it's, um, I think, the, the first live action adaptation to to get it right, <laughs> or, or, or at least the best live action adaptation there's been to date. So, if you know, we hope that that's what everyone will feel is that yeah we we hopefully in everyone's opinion got this one right and that they're gonna love it and think this is the best um the best version well not the best version of one piece but the best version of a live action anime that you um that you could possibly want now it's been a very tricky genre uh throughout the years and um not that i'm trying to talk bad about any other show but netflix was also behind cowboy bebop as as well as tomorrow Mm -hmm. and so i know on a lot of audiences minds there may have been some or there may be some reservations about you know live action one piece coming from the same people or same studios and i'm curious if you if they're in your time working on the show if you ever heard either team you know, reflecting on that experience and how they could use that to make One Piece even better. There wasn't uh, it, it sort of ever really what to me seemed like an out loud acknowledgement of that. Certainly not, not with me in the room. It was probably happening um, <laughs> elsewhere. Um, so, yeah, no one was saying like, oh, we can't do this because of how we did that in, in another show. Um, but that we were all very aware that. Um, that the fans are are gonna make or break this show, and we need to we need to do things in a way that's gonna make them happy. And I think that's you know that's also where you know deferring to Oda was such an important um, aspect of it is you know his his blessing counts for everything. Um, and yeah, even um, you know like when the teaser came out the first time, you sort of like what are the fans saying? What are the fans saying? And I'm sure they you know they were. Kind of <laughs> You know, m- m- moments in response to that to go like, okay, cool. Um, and it was like a, like a very early teaser that came out where people were responding to like some of the sets and things. Um, so yeah, there's definitely been a, a lot of awareness that wow. fan response is um, is a big deal. I mean, need to make, I mean, need to make sure our, our fans are happy. So it's everything from planting little Easter eggs uh, throughout the show. So you know, you you and I won't necessarily see them because we're not that familiar with the IP, but Hopefully the, the eagle eye fans will be like, oh, my God, look, there's, the, you know, that's going on. Um, yeah, there's, we, we, we are conscious of, of the fans. I want to make sure that they are as happy as possible. I think, you know, fans who go into it with uh, as open of a mind as possible are going to really get a kick out of it because it is very faithful to the energy and the story of the original. So uh, and I hope you guys get more episodes after this, too. Uh, I would love to see this story continue after season one uh before my final question before i let you go you mentioned you're you were on warrior and uh thankfully that show's coming back for season three after an uncertain uh you know uh status how does it feel for you you know having been a part of that show to see it uh coming back after this all this time oh it was such great news to know it's coming back um and you know season three uh i feel like the storytelling really took it to another level as well um, so, you know, everyone's kind of now holding their breath and seeing what happens next. But, uh, yeah, we've, we've gone through the bumpy ride of thinking we were done. And then, you know, a couple of years later, ha- having it sort of rise from the ashes. So, you know, whatever happens next, um, you yeah, know, it's, uh, we've, we've 
had to hold our breath for a long time before. So if we have to hold our breath for a long time again, then, then that's what will happen. <laughs> well, hopefully you won't have to wait too long this time. That's cute puppy, by the way. Uh, <laughs> But yes, hopefully you won't have to wait too long this time for for good news on that front and hopefully not for more One Piece. I, I, you know, obviously we got to see how the viewings go, but I think uh, people are going to want to dive in on it. So Tessa, thank you so much for taking this time to chat with me. I greatly appreciate it.